Hey guys, this video is all about enzyme regulation. So I'm going to start by defining what exactly regulation means when we talk about cells. So essentially, regulation is the same as control. And what we're controlling is enzymes can be activated or inactivated, aka we're kind of turning our enzymes on and off to hopefully save the cell some energy. Turning enzymes off when you don't need them is the same as turning your lights off in your house when you're not home. So it's just going to save energy. In this video, I'm just going to teach you two ways that a cell is going to deactivate an enzyme or inhibit it. So the first type of inhibition is called competitive inhibition. And in this case, our enzyme is normal, meaning that the substrate can actually bind right here in the active site um, in a normal enzyme. So it's unaffected. It's technically right now that enzyme would be considered active because it can actually do its job and take that substrate and turn it into product. But with competitive inhibition, what we get is an inhibitor binds to the active site, blocking it. So here you can see that this red dot is the inhibitor, and it's going to come into that active site. And what that does is it literally physically blocks the substrate from binding to the enzyme. So this enzyme would be considered inactive. And basically, an enzyme is always going to be considered inactive if it can't turn substrate into product, which in this case, it actually can't. So you can see here, because that active site's blocked, the substrate is just going to bounce right out, and it's not going to bind to our enzyme, meaning no product is going to be created here. The enzyme can't do its job, so it's inactive. This is called competitive inhibition because the inhibitor here competes for the active site, with the substrate and it blocks it. So that is because it's directly competing for the active site, we just call it competitive inhibition. So our next example is going to be non-competitive inhibition, which is going to work a little bit differently. In non-competitive inhibition, we take our normal enzyme, which is currently active, and we are going to have a non-competitive inhibitor bind to a site that is not the active site. So you can see here that the inhibitor didn't bind to the active site like in competitive inhibition, but it bound to this what's called an allosteric site, which is fancy for a site on the enzyme that isn't the active site. It's a pretty general term that just, it really does just mean, it's just not the active site anywhere else on the enzyme. So what we can see is that our active site, because this inhibitor bound somewhere else on the enzyme, it's actually changed the shape of the active site. So similar to competitive inhibition, our substrate is not going to be able to bind because it's not going to fit into that altered active site. So our substrate is just going to get rejected again and not bind, which means no products being made, which means that this enzyme is inactive. I definitely want to mention that even though the active site is being changed here, it's not like denaturing where it's permanent. This is a reversible process. So let's take a look and compare denaturing to regulation or inhibition. So denaturing is when you take a normal enzyme and you completely destroy it. So as you can see in the denatured protein, the active site has changed, but what's different about this is that the damage is permanent. This is not reversible. Once an enzyme is denatured, it can't go back to normal. So how do we denature a protein? Well, we know that we can do three things. And it all has to deal with changing an enzyme's environment. This is not controlled. This is usually not something that happens on purpose, but something maybe happens to an organism's environment, like you find yourself uh, in a really cold situation or you find yourself out in the heat. Um, that's how temperature can affect an enzyme. And also we have pH and salinity as well. So changing the environment, changing the pH, uh, salinity, and temperature is going to affect and possibly permanently denature our enzyme. 
So when an enzyme gets too far outside of its optimal range where it works the best, it can be drastically altered, and that is going to cause it to become permanently denatured, and it will never function again. So again, this causes a loss of enzyme function, which is fancy for the enzyme, can't bind to its substrate, can't make product. So with regulation, we can go from normal enzymes with competitive and non-competitive. And you can see what competitive and non-competitive have in common is that in competitive, the substrate cannot bind to the enzyme because there is a competitive inhibitor blocking its way. In non-competitive, we have substrate trying to bind to this enzyme, but it can't because this non-competitive inhibitor has actually caused this active site to alter. But you can see this alteration is a lot less drastic than this alteration with denatured. So just know what regulation and where regulation is truly different is that it is not um, permanent. It can be reversed. So when that inhibitor leaves the enzyme, so like if this were to kind of fall off of this enzyme, it would return and kind of snap back to normal. Same thing when this inhibitor leaves the active site, it will return back to normal where the active site is no longer blocked. So this is definitely reversible and it's a way for your body to kind of turn an enzyme on when it needs it and turn it off when it doesn't need it. And that saves us a lot of energy, which has kind of helped um, humanity over time require a little less food to survive, which is a good thing. So we'll be connecting that later on with metabolism and evolution. But for now, as long as you kind of get the gist between, okay, what's different between these? How is this different um, than denatured? You are going to be absolutely fine.